As far as getting signals from the console into your workstation, or from your workstation back into the console, you can send your signal pre-fader. Remember, every channel has a direct output. In this particular setup, we have 48 channels each with a direct output, and these go directly into 48 inputs on our workstation I.O. The way we control the recording levels going into the DAW is by setting the channel outputs or the direct outputs to be post-fader. This then allows us to ride the levels of the faders going into Pro Tools and making sure the recording level is not clipping or distorting. For our headphone system, we use 16 of the track buses. Remember, we have 24 track buses on this console. We're using 16 of those to feed our personal Avium monitoring system, and this gives the artist control over what they hear during tracking. We can have a separate feed for the drummer, separate feed for the guitarist, separate feed for the bassist, and a separate feed for the vocalist, up to 16 mono or 8 stereo feeds. We usually route the headphone feeds from the DAW return channels, and we set the bus sends to pre-fader because by doing this, it allows us to change the fader levels without affecting the feed to the headphones. The way we achieve how much level we send to our headphone system is by using our effects sends to feed the track buses. Here I'll show you an example using effects 1. I'll assign effects 1 to the EFX track bus. So rather than sending to our effects output, it's now sending the signal via the track bus. What I'm also doing is sourcing the channel output to be the source for our effects 1 send. What we then have to do is make sure our channel output is routed as a pre-fader signal. And this is done by changing the position of our source using the source select switch. And you can see confirmation of this on the meter bridge. What you'd also have to do is select which one of our 16 track buses is assigned to FX1.